Yeah? yeah? Right? Yes. Yeah. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. There's a module for that? There, of course there is. I have the pleasure of speaking with a colleague of mine from Acquia, David Aponovich. is a relatively recent recruit to the company with a what I find a very, very interesting background. I want to talk about that with you and, and uh, also your history with Drupal and, and, and what you think of it. Love to. This is great. So your background is similar to mine, at least, in that you came from a writing, a series of writing jobs. I was. I was a journalist for a long time, both uh, newspaper and online journalism. So the concept of kind of explaining things to people in the context of what they're reading, meaning in, in this case, a lot of it was technology writing, uh, talking about new upcoming technologies or uh, innovative companies or entrepreneurs who are trying to change the world. This is back in the early first dot-com bubble, um, progressing through a lot of different stages of writing, whether it was for uh, in, in marketing roles for a company or uh, at a digital agency where I had been helping to drive, and this is getting into the content management space, but getting into content management uh, planning and strategy as digital was becoming a bigger part of their company activity uh, and helping them implement and uh, do content management right. Uh, and then certainly most recently at Forrester Research, where I helped to lead web content management research and writing uh, on the topic of web content management and this, this emerging growth of digital, uh, digital uh, platforms and really educa uh, execution of digital activity inside of corporations. So can we look at your career from journalism right through to addressing technology to being in the middle of technology? Is it kind of a metaphor for the transformation that business has gone through from, from the old world to the, the digital oh, world? Absolutely. I think that you know, if you go back 10, 15 years, in the, 15 years to the first dot-com bubble, um, companies were trying to figure out what this whole internet thing was, right? And it meant different things to different companies. At the same time, though, there were technology companies building software that were going to help them get on the, you know, on the so-called then, then called super information superhighway. You know, this is terminology from back in the day, but, you know, the idea here was that this was some kind of transformation. They just didn't know quite what to make of it. Um, you know, flash forward now, and I think maturity has happened on a couple of levels, right? I think certainly the companies that, the companies, brands, uh, you know, any organization that takes themselves seriously is taking the web and digital seriously today. Um, digital being, you know, the manifestation of web and mobile and uh, social or even commerce, uh, commerce activity. You know, to take this seriously means to be invested in technology as well as strategy and planning and, and other elements too. But, you know, the maturity of companies has come a long way, you know, from those old days when they were trying to figure out just what the heck this meant to them and to their customers to today where it's very strategic to the corporate and the brand mission. So really... At every single level, whether it's my personal job through um, how to run a company well, through to the strategic and tactical actions that, that every size of organization has to take. Now, everything has gone from, everything has gone through this, this transition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and our personal approaches and our corporate approaches, everything has really fundamentally changed in the last 20 years. Yeah, I think this is this is where the you know the winners and losers are, are are happening now in business today. Really the ones that get it are winning because they get it in the in the following ways, right? They get technology that's going to underpin probably what they decide to do from a business and a brand strategy. Uh, but they look at the, the digital channels through which they operate as the, the channel through which they talk or interact with customers or prospects or partners or whoever that might be. Um, you know, this, is, this takes some kind of maturity both from a technology standpoint but from an organizational standpoint too. Who's going to own it? Who's going to create content, say, or who's going to think about the strategy that you take your business into the realm of, of these digital channels? How do you best communicate? How do you best say, you know, apply advanced techniques like personalizing the experience or um, giving people, you know, what they want at their moment of need, whether they're on a website proper or on a, a mobile uh, experience or on some other channel? You know, these are things that take a lot of thought, take a lot of strategic planning, um, takes a lot of smart people, and takes technology underpinning it all too. So one thing that I'm very, very interested to hear 
with your very broad background and with the time you spent, especially as a forester analyst, looking at the whole industry, looking at content management on the web, you've pretty much placed your bets on Drupal now as a technology. Talk about the first time you encountered Drupal and the impression it made on you then. Yeah, I think, you know, I, I, was, I spent several years at a digital agency uh, in Boston and Portland, Oregon, where a lot of the work that we did, not all, but a significant amount was in higher education, so colleges and universities. And that was where I first started to encounter, you know, significant usage of Drupal um, as, a, as a platform for web content management. Um, and saw, you know, and frankly, in the in the spirit and in the eyes of the people using it there, this kind of a very interesting devotion that you don't see often in software, you know, where, you know, the, the software is a tool to get something done. You know, Drupal for these organizations was kind of a, you know, a, a, a way of life almost. It was something that they were devoted to both as a, if you want to call it a product, using it as a product, but also saying, you know, to themselves and to the others around them, they were part of a broader community of people advancing the technology to solve, in their case, higher education needs, and then contributing back ideas or technology and code to you know, the, the, the Drupal community to say, hey, this is how we're doing it. Even just their ideas in terms of how higher education was doing it very, itself was very open as a community to tell each other their strategies and their secrets to success, uh, and sharing that among themselves as they were sharing, on, uh, you know, sharing Drupal as a, as a platform. That's interesting. I've seen Drupal grow a great deal over the past decade, and any vertical where it becomes a significant portion of the technology choice, you have thousands of people solving their business problems, their, their problem areas with the technology. So we have this classic open source uh, enablement uh, Eric von Hippel called uh, talked about users and manufacturers. Mm -hmm. And in open source, we end up manufacturing our own tools, and we know best what we need. And therefore, uh, every every time we iterate on a problem, we solve it better, right? So you get these verticals where Drupal becomes the dominant technology. And I feel that some of that passion comes from this incredible sense of, wow, it can do all this stuff for me. And wait a minute, I can even make that better. And I think that Drupal gives people this feeling more than some other technologies because of this, not only because it's open source, but a, this incredible level of adoption that it's hit. And now, from our perspective, uh, working with organizations uh, as Acquia, right, I believe you were, we were talking about this before, so I cheated, but you're seeing this kind of passion also appearing in corporations in large enterprise where it's a very much a pragmatic decision mm -hmm. to adopt this technology, but they're getting something more with it. Yeah, I think you know, on on its simplest level, right? The the ideal for any technology is that it serves your business needs very specifically. In this case, you know, running a web platform, running websites or mobile experiences or commerce experiences. You know, this is the this is what companies need today from a digital standpoint, right? Um, corporations, right? I'm seeing you know, and this is one of the reasons why um, I think you know. Placing a bet with Acquia from a, you know, from a, you know, where is the future going with content management? You know, this is where we're finding that it's crossed the chasm from being, you know, a, oh, let's say, a higher education or nonprofit into the world of, you know, true corporate brands, true enterprises that are using it. You know, our customers and others in the Drupal community, um, you know, are who's who of of, uh, of brands like Pfizer, or Jonathan Johnson, or um, the Economist magazine. I mean, these are organizations that on the global scale are making a difference. They're using digital technology to communicate or to educate or to promote. Uh, but at the bottom line, they're using technology that is open source, that is something that might not have been chosen several years ago um, when they were looking at a you know, much different landscape for technology. So I think that you know, the evolution of their thinking, the evolution of the platform has helped them to evolve how they think about open source and given them an entree into this community that says, hey, it's okay to be an enterprise and to play in the open source world too. I mean, this is not without precedent, right? We've seen a lot of open source technology come from the bottom up in the enterprise technology stack, right? We have open source um, operating systems or databases. I mean, this is commonality across everybody's organization today. Why not business applications? And I think we're at the level where now content management is become a is becoming a de facto uh, you know, or, or Drupal I should say is becoming a de facto standard for a lot of organizations where you know it might not have been several years ago and I think that the corporate approach to open source has also evolved 
from beyond taking and using cost efficient, let's say cost efficient software to the point where now at DrupalCon at uh, some of the other community events, you see developers who've been paid for by a very large organization to come and improve Drupal itself and sprint and hack and work on code in the name of the corporation effectively, but because mm -hmm. they understand that if the platform is doing better, they're going to do better. And um, along the way, while the big brands use Drupal, all of that code becomes available to the millions of sites and the hundreds of thousands of people who are doing Drupal on a day-to-day -day basis. So I wonder if there's any calculation on the on, a, on an enterprise side that, hey, we're also making a difference in the world. We're, we're making the world a better place. Yeah, I think that that has a place in what's going on right now with the, the, the move of Drupal into organizations um, with global scale or large brand scale. Um, I think, though, that any organization looks at what's the best tool for what they're trying to accomplish or what's the best platform. Um, you know, business is a very pragmatic thing. Businesses make very pragmatic decisions, right? Um, often it's going to be what's the best total cost of ownership, what's the best usability, what's the best extensibility, what's the best uh, platform that's going to make me agile. I mean, these are things that are top of mind as companies go through these digital transformations that every organization has to be thinking about today. If there's an added benefit, though, of saying, hey, we can be part of something bigger that will then gain us some you know, additional benefits, certainly I think that opens their eyes to you know, how they can get there faster, better, possibly cheaper, but certainly you know, benefit from the, let's call it the greater good of the open source movement. But even leaving the greater good aside, we know that these organizations wouldn't be investing in changing and improving the technology and sending their developers to do that outside of their walled gardens mm -hmm. if there weren't a pragmatic benefit. And I think it's a great sign of, of how things are changing. Yeah, I think that you know the, the one thing that I've been quite interested in is what's happening, say, with large-scale Drupal in this, in this part of the o overall Drupal community where we have you know, some of the biggest brands and companies in the world using Drupal in very, you know, uh, very profound ways that you know, they may not, might not have done several years ago. And they're finding both inspiration from each other um, and not to sound touchy about it or, or touchy-feely about it, but they're finding very interesting ways of, of doing projects by listening and learning from each other. Um, you know, these are companies that may not have talked in a traditional, let's say, commercial software world. Um, their business was their business. Um, you know, with Drupal, at least, it's opened their eyes to say it's okay to talk across the aisle to a quasi-competitor or even somebody who's not in my own market and say, what are you doing right? What are you doing wrong? How can we help each other? And this, you know, I think the idea of large-scale Drupal is, as an organization is great because it brings those thought leaders together, not just to think things through, but to do things together, um, meaning make Drupal better, make their own projects better, make their own businesses better. Sure, and it's a real-world example of, like you say, quasi-competitors acknowledging that, hey, we're not IT organizations, we have similar business problems. Let's solve those best and then compete on selling widgets, on changing minds, on whatever it is that they do yeah. out in the world. I think you know, Drupal is many things. To many organizations, it's part of their, you know, part of their IT or technology or web infrastructure. Um, the competition happens certainly at a digital level, but the business competition happens in products, in offerings, in services, well beyond just the, the fact that they use Drupal. I mean, this is where businesses are win or lost. Uh, you know, win or lose is, you know, how well can they service, say, their customers, or how well can they differentiate their products or, or their services. Part of that is digital. So there's some, you know, particular uh, ways that they do things or manners in which they build great digital experiences that are going to help them differentiate in the long term. But for a lot of the fundament fundamentals for building uh, the right web technology that underpins this, you know, um, they find it okay to start sharing ideas and, frankly, getting to a you know getting to a state where if they need something that's improved or something that's better, uh, working together is you know they find this to be a benefit, not a not a detriment to the to the overall mission. Thanks for taking the time to talk with me. Yes. <laughs>